This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we'll be showing you how to make weather claws. These are little more than fabric walls of protection against the elements when sailing in rough, wet conditions, permitting crew to sit in the cockpit without being constantly harassed by the wind and soaked by the spray and rain. Our weather cloths will fold over the lifelines or rails and snap in place. At the bottom, they may be attached via line, shot cord, or velcro. Let's get started and show you how to make your own. We will be making a port and starboard panel. Then we'll be making an aft panel. Making three panels will reduce the overall size of the weather cloth, which should provide for an easier and quick installation. To make our weather cloths, we will need to take a length and a height measurement on the boat. Now that we have the measurements, we need to add to the panel's overall size the amount for a double hem and the fold over along the top, which we will snap over the lifeline. This illustration demonstrates the amount of hem allowance and the extra fabric that will be required for the hem along the bottom and the fold over along the top edge. Simply mark the fabric to the correct length and height as indicated in the previous illustration. Then cut out the fabric with scissors or a hot knife. Since we will be creating a double hem on all sides, we will just use scissors as the fabric's unraveling will not be an issue since the edge will be folded under. We will be making our weather cloths from Sumbrella Marine Grade Fabric from Sailrite. You may decide to install clear vinyl window material panels inside of the weather cloth for better visibility. We're not going to be doing that here, but that is an option that you may choose to do if you'd like a little bit better visibility. Let's now work on creating our hems along the two long edges. To do this, Angela is marking the fabric with a soapstone pencil two inches up from the raw edge. Then she will apply seam stick or double-sided basting tape for canvas so that she can create a double fold hem which will stick together so it can be taken to a sewing machine to be sewn. Here she is folding the first hem over to the line she struck down on the fabric. After that is done, she will yet again apply the basting tape for canvas to the edge and fold it over again, thus creating our double hem. Next, we will take the panel to the sewing machine and sew this double hem down with a straight stitch about an eighth inch to a quarter inch away from the edge. We want to sew with a long stitch length of six millimeters or more to help prevent needle pucker. The smaller the stitch length, the more you will see wrinkles in the fabric when held up and viewed from the side. So try using a 6mm stitch length to avoid that issue. Be sure to reverse at the beginning and end of your sewing to lock the stitch in place. We're using the Sailrite Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine to sew this weather cloth panel. Now follow that same procedure for the opposite long side. However, here we're using the wider seam stick for canvas, which is a half inch width. The wider width gives a little bit more sticking power, so it's great for hems and seams on Sumbrella marine grade fabric. Sailrite carries three different size widths of seam stick for canvas. The quarter inch width is best for zippers and cushions, the three eighths width is standard for most applications, and the half inch width is best for large hems and seams because it provides more holding power. Whichever width you pick, you will always find your next project goes smoother with seam stick for canvas from Sailrite. Now create the double hems on the two short ends, just as we did with the long sides. We're going to skip ahead to the next step. On the boat, Angela knows that the ends of the weather cloth will be up against stanchion poles, so she is marking a location for grommets so we can tie it to the pole if desired. But more importantly, we are going to fold the top of our panel over the lifelines, so we need to reinforce the area where snaps will be installed. So here she is marking where the fold is located for our panel. Our lifeline is 24 inches high, so our fold should be at that location. This is where we need to install the reinforcement 
And for us, we're going to use a one inch wide webbing for that. She continues to mark down the length of the panel where the webbing will be placed so she can strike a line at that location. We will again be using seam stick for canvas to pre-base the webbing at the appropriate location prior to sewing it down. Since the ends of the webbing may unravel, we will use the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife to seal the ends of the webbing as we cut it to size. Then we will sew down each edge of the webbing with a straight stitch. Before we can install the snaps, we need to position the cover on the boat so we know where each snap and or grommet should be placed. So we're going to install grommets at the two short ends. We will use these grommets to secure the cover preliminarily in place to determine where the snaps should be installed. Where we want the grommets installed, we will use the hole cutter and the premium cutting block on the backside to prevent damage to the tool and a heavy mallet to punch the holes. Then we'll be installing a number one spur grommet. This is a nickel plated brass grommet and we're going to use the number one uh, die set to install this spur grommet. Insert the male portion into the hole, place it on the anvil, place the a female portion with the teeth on top and then give it a few blows with a heavy mallet to set the grommet in place. Do that at each location where you want a grommet installed. We're going to cut some eighth inch leech line to about 12 inches in length and then we're going to use these anywhere we want to tie the weather cloth to the stanchions or lifelines. We're going to use the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife to do this. Weather cloths should be easy to install, but just in case of a serious storm, they should also be something that can break away with a boarding sea, especially at the bottom. Attaching the cover securely while still providing for breakaway is a delicate and tricky task. Here at the stanchion, we feed the leech line rope through the grommets and we will use a YKK barrel lock to secure the line. This does little more than just allow us to snap the panel over the lifelines or rail. Right now we do not have snaps installed, so we're just using it to position the panel. Once the panel is positioned in the correct location, we can mark for any obstacles that may need passage through the panel. It's also not a bad idea to use pony clamps to help hold the flap over the lifeline for better positioning. Now simply use the soapstone pencil to mark for obstacles that need cutouts. Also mark where stanchion poles fall and where you may want to install grommets or snaps at the top or bottom of each stanchion pole. You may opt instead to install Velcro at the bottom so it can break away quickly in the case of a boarding sea. That's your choice. Or grommets with line. Our tow rail does not have pre-manufactured holes in it as many do today. If it did, we could use Velcro or line to tie the bottom of our weather cloths there. We have some stainless steel hooks at our tow rail so we can just install grommets here and tie to them. Angela is making her own one inch binding from the scrap fabric that is left over. If you choose to make your own binding, start by marking the fabric to a two inch wide strip and then cut it with scissors to that size. Then fold the two edges in towards the center. This can be done using a seam stick for canvas or by just pre-folding it and then taking this umbrella to an iron set on very low heat and creasing the sides. This will create a one inch wide binding. Or if you like, you can purchase prefabricated binding from Sayorite. We need that binding to cover the edges of any cutouts. Here is an opening for lines to come through the cover. 
We want to protect the edges and give a finished look, so we would be sewing on some binding here. Angela is positioning the binding on the edge by hand as she sews it on with the Sayerite Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine. Your task is to sew only about 3 inches, stop, bury the needle so you do not lose your position, then fold the binding over the edge and repeat the steps until it is sewn on securely. Here you can see the weather cloth installed and we did allow the top of our stanchion pole to exit the cover. This is done just as it is with any of the cutouts, just uh, cut around the obstacle and then finish off the edge with binding. Here's a look at it installed. At the bottom of each stanchion base where the cover will fall, we're going to use a set of number one spur grommets that will fall on each side of the pole. We can then use line or even webbing with Velcro sewn onto the webbing that will run through the grommets. The grommet will allow us to use any combination of fastening methods, and if the Velcro wears out in the sun, as it typically does, we can replace it because it's just fed through the grommets. Good idea, right? Now along the top edge and where the webbing was sewn to the cover, Angela is marking where a snap should be installed. She is using a snap at about every 11 to 12 inches and then marking the fabric to make sure that she's happy where each snap will fall. Then she's just using a square to make sure they're straight across from each other. Sayerite sells many tools that may be used to fasten snaps to canvas, but here for this project we're going to use the famous press and snap installation tool. Here we've installed a button and a socket in the press and snap installation tool. Then all we need to do is to press the lever to set the snap at the appropriate location. It punches a hole and sets the snap all in the same press of a lever. For this project, we're installing the snaps with the press and snap tool. The press and snap installation tool is a great tool for easy and quick installation of snaps. A one hand or two handed squeeze of the tool automatically punches a hole in the fabric application and sets the snap at the same time. The press and snap is a very durable, professional grade fastener installation tool that could save you hours of tedious work on your next project. The press and snap tool is sold at sayerite.com. Once we have the button and sockets installed along the top edge, we will now need to install the stud to the webbing reinforced area below. However, instead of using the standard snap eyelet, we're going to use a button and a stud, which will give a more pleasing look to our snaps on both the outside and inside of our cover. So we left the button die in the press and snap tool and we will change out the socket die for the stud die. Then we will set the studs and buttons in the webbing where indicated by our marks. As mentioned earlier, it's up to you to fasten the weather cloths around your stanchions and at the tow rails. At the bottom here, we're simply using YKK barrel locks, which will not hold very well in any type of high winds, so you may opt to use any combination of fasteners, small leech line, which may break away if needed, or webbing with Velcro sewn to it that's run through the grommets. Also, adding clear vinyl plastic like Plastipane 30 gauge from Sayerite is a great addition so you can have visibility and yet be protected from the wind and spray. Next up is the materials and tools list that was used to make these weather cloths. You will find all the supplies needed to make your own at Sayerite.com. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayerite website or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support.